Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tacoma Cyclist. I'm Tacoma Cyclist, and Boogeyman's at school again, so he's not here. If you watched this video, uh, or even if you didn't, I can tell you that I had uh, ordered some Lake CX403, their top-of-the-line shoes. I went by the sizing guides online and did an unboxing for you and tried them on, and they just didn't fit. Well, I ordered another size up, and it should have been bigger, and it should have easily fit my foot. And once again, it didn't fit. Only difference was that time I wound up having to sell the pair for a lot less than I paid for them. I've also done the same thing with Bont. I took the measurements exactly as they said, tried them on, had to send them back. So I don't know if I'm just a freak of nature or if cycling shoes in general are just sized very poorly. I'm willing to bet it's that one because I can tell you for a matter of fact that I have several different pairs of cycling shoes and they range anywhere from size 46 down to 43. My, they all fit me. My foot doesn't change size based on what it goes into, yet strangely, um, the shoes are sized dramatically differently. So I have with me today a new pair of shoes, and if you, you know, looked at the title of this video, you probably know what they are. But I'm going to go ahead and unbox them, and I'm going to tell you, I went through a sizing process that was a little bit different this time. Um, again, I've tried the Bonts and the Lakes based on their sizing guides, and they didn't work. The Shimano S-Fires that I have here in this box, all I did is I took my shoe size, my, Amer you know, my US-based shoe size, which is somewhere between a 10 and a half and an 11, and compared it to their sizing chart, which says on their sizing chart I should be a 45.5. Interestingly, some of the Lakes have me at a 43 and a half, the Bonts have me at a 44, this is a 45.5. I also tried the S-Work 7, uh, and that puts me in a 44.5 on the S-Work 7. So again, it's all over the place. You almost have to do trial and error. If you can, you should go try them out in person. Uh, there's not a lot of high-end cycling shoes in my area, so I have to order them online and then just do the best I can. So without any further ado, though, let me jump into unboxing this, and, you know, let's try them on. Once again, I currently have on a pair of my Swiftwick socks. A uh, huge fan of Swiftwick. I think they're like the perfect thickness and weight, uh, especially in their thinner line. They're great for like race socks. These are relatively thin, about as thin as I'd go. They do, people make thinner socks. These are about as thin as I'd go. I also have with me a very thick pair of Castelli Merino wool socks. Um, I, I actually use uh, Swiftwick Merino wool socks too, but the Castellis are about as, like they're way thicker. So I'm gonna try them and see. Also, before I even try these on, I'm going to put up here on the screen. Uh, I've been to a local running shoe place, um, Fleet Feet. No association or sponsorship with them. But the Fleet Feet near me actually has a foot scanning tool where they, you stand on a platform and it does all sorts of 3D measurements of your foot and it tells you all sorts of things about your foot. Other than the fact that I have like no arch, none whatsoever, completely flat foot, uh, and a pronounced bunion on the right foot, my feet aren't that weird. Yes, my left foot's a tad longer, my right foot's a tad wider. Everybody has some of these variations. It shouldn't be that hard for a shoe to fit. Okay, so the whole thing that kind of gets me with the lake situation is, is this. Um, I don't have crazy unusual feet, so I don't know why it is that a standard size shoe wouldn't fit me. In fact, most standard size shoes fit me. But that's really not the problem. I called Lake after I had a kind of a failure with shoes and um, there's a number on their website and the number basically says, you know, call here if you want um, to talk about, you know, issues. So I called the number and they basically said, actually they didn't basically say, they did say, you know what, maybe, maybe Lake shoes aren't for you. And that was like, 30 seconds into the conversation. Like, we didn't even really talk much about it. It was just, maybe Lake shoes aren't for you. You know, and I think if I'm spending 550 bucks for a pair of shoes, you could spend a little bit more time talking to me about what else is in your line, what other options there might be. It seemed like they just wanted to get me off the phone. Now, I don't know if that's Lake's normal customer service. 
Um, and I don't mean to trash a company, but the reality is, is th that's how they dealt with me. And that doesn't, that doesn't sit well with me. So that's, that is what it is. Now I'm going to unbox the shoes here. And I will admit, normally I would never take this out prior to actually unboxing it on camera, but I accidentally just had a little technical glitch with the camera and I've already unboxed these. I already did the video, but uh, it didn't record. So I'm going to unbox them again. I will tell you, these look like they're brand new, never been touched, never been worn. That's a great sign. Uh, a lot of times when you mail order shoes, they've been tried on like five, 10 different times or maybe even more. All right, size wise, again, uh, I went with a 45.5. I'm gonna move that up in the camera here. 45.5, which equates to about a 10.9 in US shoe sizing. I'm between a 10 and 11, so 10.9 seems to be a pretty good idea. And it says 288 millimeters is the last size. Um, last being the actual, basically the shape, structure of the shoe. Uh, love that sound. Okay, nothing in here. Like I said, I've already unboxed these, so I apologize, but uh, we'll do this again. So, a couple things about these. Well, actually, let me show you what's in the box. That's the other shoe. It does ship with a couple different shapes of, uh, or two different shapes total of um, uh, four foot uh, instep uh, for their default inserts. The yellow is a mid height and the red is a high height. Um, if you want to go without, you know, if you like a very low instep, you can just take this off altogether. Uh, I generally kind of like a medium size myself, so I'll probably stick with the yellow in there for now. Honestly, though, I'll probably put my own inserts in. I'm kind of picky about that. Uh, the other things that are in the box, like I said, you got these inserts, you got a little information on the boa, and then you've got a nice shoe bag that's kind of like a Musette style shoe bag. Instructions on, you know, how to wear shoes. So. Overall finish and quality, let me tell you, honestly, um, you really can't see this very well, but I will tell you that the white finish on this is, is really cool. Uh, it's a pearlescent white. It's not glossy, although it doesn't, like, it'll be easy to clean. It's not um, super matte either, but it's, it's got this pearlescent sheen to it. So it's actually almost picking up some blue in the light. And then, of course, the S Fire logo down here um, is definitely pearlescent. Like it's gonna work great with my bar tape that already has that same kind of vibe to it. Uh, it is that single piece construction. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about a review of the shoe itself. Uh, I will do a review later on if these shoes work for me. But uh, Boa Dial, super cool looking Boa Dial in my opinion. Now, moment of truth, not yet. <laughs> Let's weigh it. That's the real moment of truth. I'm not a weight weenie, but I know some of you are, and you really are concerned about the weight of shoes. Um, in general, I'm not. I wear CDs normally, and CDs are heavy. All right, 275 grams. That's not bad. That's actually a pretty light shoe. Not the lightest, but certainly light. Let's try the right shoe on first. So far, everything's promising. I actually have room in the toe box, uh, whereas with the legs, I did not. Uh, the, my toes were smashing up against the, the lid of the toe box. Uh, I can tell you, I just noticed one thing weird because of the way that this tongue works. As you tighten the boa dial down, what essentially it does is it pushes the tongue further down inside. So it may take a little bit of getting used to because it's essentially taking this tongue and pushing it kind of on the inside of your foot. And, and I can, it, it feels different. And if it feels different on a 90 mile ride, whatever, or a race, it might hurt. But I can't say that I've ever actually gotten a pair of shoes that didn't take some adjustment whether it's the tongue rubbing the foot the wrong way, the heel, whatever. Um, so if that's the only issue that I have, I, I could probably deal with it. It seems to be a relatively soft tongue overall. Okay. Uh, heel slippage. 
There appears to be just a tiny little bit uh, in here, but honestly, not an appreciable amount, and it's very likely I can get the boa down a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, if I get that boa down um, into sprint mode, which if you know me and my sprinting abilities or lack thereof, you know that's kind of a joke. But yeah, this uh, is good. Heel's not going anywhere. I will say, the inserts that ship with this are low volume inserts. Oh, bow dyes are a little stiff to start. Yeah, the, the inserts that ship with this are low volume inserts. I have room in these shoes. They look narrow, they look small, um, but I have room. What that tells me is that my slightly higher volume inserts that when I go in here, uh, I won't likely have to crank down the bows all the way. And I did just have to crank them down all the way. So, uh, oh, and by the way, this is, this is the wide version. I did go with the wide version. Um, that's an important distinction. Uh, I've been finding that wider version shoes give my toes room to spread. And that to me has equaled lack of hot spots and more comfort. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect the midfoot or the heel dramatically, but in the toes, it definitely does make a difference. So these are the wides. Uh, okay. Higher volume inserts, likely going to cause uh, uh, solve any issues with heel float, although I didn't really have major heel float. I just had a little tiny bit. Let's try these on with some wool socks. And while I'm changing out these socks, I will tell you the reason that I have decided to move away from the CDs. Uh, I really do like the CDs. I think they're some of the best made shoes on the planet. Uh, I don't think that you can find a better quality shoe than a CD, but there's two reasons I'm moving away from them. Number one, the ratcheting mechanism on it, similar to a boa, it pulls a strap across the top. The only difference is there's a little plastic piece that sticks out right here. Because the way that plastic piece sticks out and how close you can trim it, uh, it actually winds up striking the uh, crank arm every single pedal stroke, and it's gonna damage the crank arm. So I've had to move my cleats further out. I don't have wide hips, so I wound up having to move the pedals out, the, the cleats out too far, which created too much of a stance on the bike. That's number one. Number two, uh, the other challenge is my foot benefits from having the cleats further back on the shoe. And in the CD shoes, they're a little bit far forward. Not crazy, there are some shoes that are way worse. Um, but I do know that things like the Shimano here, um, the S-Works, all of those are gonna have sh uh, cleats mounting positions that are further back. And I'll, I'll stick this up here. You can see on the bottom here, the cleat pattern, it actually has the ability to adjust the fore aft position of the actual cleat mounting points and um, get you the option to bring the cleats further back. There's a lot to be said for mounting the cleats further back. Okay, uh, these are very thick wool socks and I still have plenty of room in the toe box. Very, like a lot of room in the toe box, uh, which is, is fantastic actually. You know, it gives you plenty of room to move. Uh, having a cramped in toe box is just, is the worst. So uh, bad for your cycling, bad for long-term comfort. So. So far winning. All right, um, I'm gonna do a long-term review of these because honestly, I feel like it's likely I'm just gonna go ahead and keep these shoes. Um, I said that about the lakes at some point too and I wound up selling them. These have no discomfort right out of the box. So I take that as a really good sign. Let me ride with them for a few hundred kilometers and then I'll post a review. Um, all I can tell you though is if you are having to trust online sizing guides, if you know what your American shoe size is, in my case, that translated perfectly to these Shimanos. I can say that it did not translate well to the other brands of shoes that I've already mentioned. Um, so take it for what it's worth. Review coming on these, stay tuned, and I will get one to you as soon as possible. Other than that, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate everybody. We've had a lot of subscribers join lately. Thank you so much for that. If you like these videos, you like the content, hit the like button. If you don't like it, tell me what you don't like. Feel free to hit the unlike button or dislike button. 
Um, if you haven't already, subscribe. Only like 5% of the people that are watching our videos are subscribed. I mean, like, it doesn't take any effort. Just hit subscribe. And then while you do it, hit the notification thing too, because then you'll know when we put new videos up. I've got a couple more race reviews coming up. I've got a couple more uh, other types of reviews coming up. Um, to me, pretty exciting content. Hopefully it is to you as well. So thanks again for stopping by. Uh, very much appreciate your time today, and we will see you again very, very soon.